Right, so I shall have like fluid. And now it's time for chapter two of Starlight Falls, Friends and Sweets, written by Buddy Bear eighty three and Kusami one. The drawings by Sneevels McGee. You're looking real nice, Catboy. I looked over at Henry, who was just staring at me, watching for me from the other side of the bathroom. Henry. No response. Well, if you're not going to talk, I'm leaving. No. No. Henry ran fast and pinned me up against the bathroom wall. What the fuck? Someone! Anyone! Help me! Josuke! Cole! Why you be my boyfriend, little cougar? No, go to hell, you son of a bitch! Spitting on him. Well then. Henry went down to his pocket. If I can't have you... With a little bit of reflection, he pulled out a big knife covered in blood. No one can. No! I woke up in a cold sweat, remembering the awful night, that fucking night. Mr. Diaz, I know sleeping in class is one thing, but screaming like you're a goddamn maniac is another. Do I make myself clear? Oh, fuck. Out of all places, I had to be on campus. Fuck me. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Karen. Well then, as I was saying in class... It's been almost two weeks since I woke up from the hospital. February 27th. Ricardo, are you okay? I looked over to Yusuke to see him with a worried face. Yeah, I'm fine. Just another nightmare. I swear, Yusuke, this is the fourth time now. I rubbed my ears thinking how long this was going to be for days, weeks, months, years. This wouldn't have happened if... I paused for a second. If... I couldn't even say his name. It was too hard to even say it. Hey, it's okay, you don't have to say his name. Honestly, I wouldn't say his name either for what he did to you. Mushida Karanya Tara, Watashi wa Karayo Karusa to Chike Masu. I smiled at him, knowing I always have my back. Arigato Gozaji Mashito Josuke. Ever since we became friends in kindergarten, we both learned each other's language. I teach him Spanish, and he would teach me Japanese. The other time we'd finally be able to talk to each other in Spanish or Japanese. I looked down at the table where I had my work. I also had my big sketchbook out too. One was him. That rabbit. That monstro who did this to me. I keep thinking about why he chose me that night. Out of all the men he had to choose me. But was there a motive or was it just coincidence? I also keep thinking about that alligator cop. I also keep thinking about that alligator cop. He was in full uniform but didn't have his shoes on. The way he was covered in blood, some teeth were missing... And last but not least, his throat was cut open. I decided to finally tell Yusuke what else I saw that night too. And it won't believe me, but eventually I have to tell someone. Hey, Yusuke, I need to tell you something. I saw then he had a smug smile. Oh, did you and that bear start dating now? What? No. Plus we're still trying to get to know each other, you crazy pair. I took a deep breath and let it all out. There was someone else with me that night in the bathroom. Yusuke gave me a confused look. If there was someone else in the bathroom with you, why didn't he help you? It must be because I was the only one to see him. What the hell do you mean? You're the only one who saw him. Yusuke, because he's dead, dude. He's dead. The first time in a long time you're scared and nervous about this. The last time he got this scared was when his father told him he'd be taken over as the heir of their rich family soon. Dead! He shouted really high, but thankfully Karen didn't hear us. Hey, not so loud, dude. I'm sorry, but Ricardo, think about what you're saying. Are you sure this bunny didn't drug you that night too, and you think you saw a dead person? I have a feeling he didn't believe me. I swear to God he didn't drug me. I'd remember if I did or not. Do you remember what he looked like? Thankfully for the nightmares, he was well involved. I looked down at the sketchbook and began to draw. After about three to four minutes, he was done. Here, yeah, this is what he looked like. Just a kid and I just looked at the drawing. I remember every single detail about him. I just wish he gave me his name or something else about him. So that's what you saw, huh, Ricardo? It took me a minute to get my bearings straight. Yes, that's him. That's what I saw. I never thought that rabbit would take a life, but who knows how long he's been doing this. Days? Months? Years? Did he say or do anything to you? I remember everything he said that night. He 
He said my name. He doesn't remember his name at all. He had a wife and kid. He was happy, then a victim. Other than that, no, nothing else. After a moment of silence, Josuke spoke. If what you're saying is true, we need to tell Owen this right away. Are you crazy? Owen is not going to believe us. Let's say we're ever going to make him believe we need evidence. Ricardo, we... Well, Jusuke could see anything when he heard a knock at the door. Karen walked over the door and opened it. All of the class looked up and saw two people. One was the principal of the college. The other was someone new. Yeah, I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Karen, but it looks like you have a new student joining you today. Oh, well, that's quite all right. Thanks again, Principal. Uh, please, come in. He was a hyena looks to be about maybe 20 or 21. He's wearing a T-shirt that said 1986 on it, blue jeans that had holes on them, black boots and a purple coat on. His face looked like he didn't sleep for weeks, maybe years. His eyes were an amber colour. He was wearing earrings on both ears. He also had a necklace on that said love, hate. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourself, Karen said. We all stared at him, waiting for him to say anything. We didn't speak for a good more minute. Then finally, in a low voice, he said, uh, Hi, uh, name's Pediaco, uh, Pediaco Logan, and I'm 20. The class and teacher didn't know what to think. Was he shy? I know she never judge a book by its cover. Why oh, don't you have a seat? I know class is almost over, but please sit anyway like Pediaco. Pediaco tried to find a seat. The other students didn't want to sit next to him. That's fair. The entire college was kind of shitty most of the time. But I know this is not how you should treat a new student. When Bediaco was getting close to me and Jusuke, Jusuke said, It's not... I quickly nudged him in the gut. Don't mind him. Here, you can sit next to us, Bediaco. I then pulled the seat out next to me and Bediaco sat down. When he was finally sitting, I introduced myself to him. Oh, Bediaco, my name is Ricardo and this rude dragon is Jusuke. I reached out for a handshake. Bediaco took a second to figure out what I was doing, but then took my handshake. Oh, likewise, and thank you for letting me sit next to you guys. Yeah, no problem. Welcome to Starlight Falls College, I said with a smile. Jusuke quickly pulled me closer to him and whispered in my ear, We're not done talking here. We need to tell Owen what you saw, whether he believes us or not. And you also had to invite him to sit with us? Ever since we were little, me and Jusuke have been inseparable. Unless we were trying to date anyone, then we'd support each other. Yusuke has always been my only friend through and through. The fact is, we were both scared of trying new things. I couldn't let Veliako be alone. I was just trying to be nice. I then whispered to Yusuke. Okay, fine. We shall own whenever we get a chance. Also, lay off. Veliako is new out here, after all. I was trying to be nice to him. So maybe it's time we have another person in this friend group. Anyway, enough chat. Let's focus on class. Ten minutes later... Okay, class dismissed. See you all next class. Finally, we can leave. Me and Jusuke have been in college since last September, since we figured we could learn a bit more. Plus, we had loads of free time. Hi, Ricardo. I never thought we'd get out of there. Come on, let's get some food. I'm starving. After getting our coats on, we left. I couldn't help but notice Betty Arco just sitting in his seat. He didn't move or anything. Hold on, Jusuke. I went back to check on him. Hey, Bediaco, is everything okay? He just looked up at me, not saying anything and not moving. Hey, you're hungry. I mean, Jusuke okay, going to get something to eat. Uh, do you want to join us? Bediaco then looked up and shook his head yes. All right, then, let's go. We can show you around town too, if you like. Uh, yes, please. All right, let's go. As the three of us exited the building, I explained to Jusuke okay, that Bediaco will be joining us and to try to be friendly with him as well. I was waiting for a couple of minutes, a limousine pulled up. And the person who was driving was a rat, a.k.a. the butler. We all got in the limousine and rode off. We all just sat in silence. I thought Jusuke wasn't in the best mood since he didn't invite Bediaco with us. But I knew I couldn't just leave him. Once we know more about Bediaco, then maybe Jusuke will look at him differently. Starlight Falls is a small little town that's been around since 1895. Thankfully, this town doesn't have that bad of a history. And families like living here a lot. Now, there's one thing I don't like about this place, but I won't get into that since I haven't thought about it in a long time. I know some places in this town. We have a bar, grocery store, arcade, many fast food places. Recently we have a mine, which I didn't know about until Cole told me. We're now Cole's doing at work. Hey, Matthew, are we there yet? Just guessed in an odd voice. 
almost there, Mr. Jusuke. We finally arrived at what appeared to be a cafe slash bakery, which I don't think the three of us knew. Hey, Matthew, surely this is the right place. Unfortunately, that the place you were thinking of was closed today, so I thought this was the next best thing. What are you kidding me? Jusuke said in a pissed off voice. Oh, calm down, Jusuke. Look, Matthew, thank you for driving us. We'll lead you, right, Jusuke? Yes, Ricardo. After Jusuke apologised to Matthew, the three of us went in. As we walked in, we saw maybe two or three groups with not many members in it. We figured we'd give this place a try. When we got to the front counter, we were looking at the drinks and desserts. After deciding on what we wanted, we got to the front of the counter, waiting for the person to face us. I swear, if Brandon isn't here for his shift today, he'll be fired. Sighed the person behind the counter. I'm sorry, we're short on staff now. How can I... The person who worked in the front desk was the otter for my birthday, and time visited me in the hospital. This time I was able to see him more clearly. He was tall, a light belly, but also strong muscles. He has a black moustache and light beard and wears glasses. He also has one pierced earring on his left ear. He's wearing a cooking outfit as well. Oh my god, Ricardo, who's the case, is that you? We all just stared at each other, then Bediaka spoke in a low, quiet voice. Oh wait, uh, you three know each other. The three of us took a while to gather our thoughts, and I said, Yeah, it's a long story. I'm glad to see your boys doing well after what happened. Ricardo, how's your neck? My neck is doing all right. Still hard to look at every once in a while, but I'm fine. Oh, good. That's a relief. Um, what can I get you, boys? For you, Kate could answer, I had a cover question of my own. Now, hold on a minute there, Otter. I said in a nice and calm, but still pissed off voice. I have some questions. For starters, one, me and Jusuke never got your name since we last saw you at the hospital. And two, what are you doing here? The author was taken back by what I said, but I could tell from his face he's disappointed. Also felt kind of bad too. Okay, your boys do deserve these answers. With a clear voice he said, My name is Mohammed Bakker, and I am the owner of this place. Mohammed Bakker, huh? It definitely suits him. Did he make all these tasty treats? Now, if your boys are ready to order, I can take it now. Okay, I'll go first, Yusuke said. I'll have two of your big chocolate chip cookies, please, with a coffee. And I went, uh, can I get a slice of your birthday cake with hot chocolate? Last but not least, Bediaco. I'll have uh, one slice of a scotch cinnamon pie with milk. All right, your boys have a seat, I'll be with you shortly. The three of us chose a booth. We and Yusuke sat on the right side while Bediaco sat on the left side. All three of us didn't know what to say, so I decided to break the ice. So, Bediaco, are you new to town? Bediaco didn't say anything for a while, but finally spoke. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, do you come and visit often, then? Uh, not exactly. Okay, not much of a talker, then. Well, that's okay. Then Jusuke asked, What do you like to do, or ever? Jusuke, be nice. I am sorry about him. He's usually not like this. Bediaco took a while to respond and said, I really don't do much. I mostly go on long walks a lot and sometimes spend all time in the park. Whatever if you guys really want to know. Bediaco paused for a moment and grabbed his backpack and pulled something out. I do a lot of origami. That makes me really happy. It's a cute penguin. Whoa, this is really cute, Bediaco, I said. Yeah, I guess it's cool, said Jusuki. Oh, thank you, guys, Bediaco said with a smile on his face, finally showing us his first smile. Ah, sorry for the wait, boys. We're really short on staff today. Thank you so much for waiting patiently. Oh, it's no problem, Mohammed, I said. We all looked at our food and looked really delicious. As the three of us took our first bites, we all just went, mmm, in an amazing state. Then right on cue, we all simultaneously said, Oh, my God, this is so delicious. We all looked at each other. Just get a really big happy face with a big smile. Eddie Echo, on the other hand, had a plain face before giving a big smile. After we all finished our food, we all decided to just talk a little bit since the three of us didn't have any plans for the rest of the day. So, uh, Bediaco, where did you come from? I asked first. Well, you uh, see, um, I was actually born here in Starlight Falls. But after finishing kindergarten, my family had to move because of their new jobs. Why did you guys move? Josuke said. Uh, we moved to New York, uh, New York City. 
I see. Did you enjoy moving there and growing up there? Uh, moving there was fine. It was nice to see a new place. As for growing up, uh, no, I didn't. When I was in elementary school, I didn't make any new friends. Same with middle school and high school. It was tough growing up there. Damn, I didn't know he was this lonely. No wonder he didn't look so good when we first saw him. Does he also have depression as well? Uh, could you excuse me in Juice Case a second? I need to ask him something very personal, I said in a quick manner. I grabbed Juice again and we went to the bathroom. Okay, Ricard, do you think this new kid is weird at all to you? Or is it just me? No, I don't think so. I mean, I feel bad that he's lonely a lot. A lot of people are lonely and like being by themselves. I know being by yourself isn't always fun all the time. What's up with you? I thought you liked trying something new. All he's done since Betty Arco showed I was being an asshole to him. I said, try not to get pissed off. I'm sorry, Ricardo. Yeah, right, I was being an ass. Do you remember when I was still homeschooled? I couldn't go to normal school until the first grade. I remember the first day I'd seen Jusuke for the first time everyone in the class was around him. I remember my first day going to first grade. All the kids wanted my attention, wanted to be friends with me since my family was rich. All they really cared about was my money and other expensive stuff. You don't want a class who didn't care how rich I was. I didn't care if you wanted money. You just wanted to be actual friends. I'm so grateful that, that day we've been friends ever since. I remember that day as well. We were drawing or something like that. I didn't have any friends either. All I had was OMG. Wait, what is it? Uh, the only friend I had was a polar teddy bear. I said in an embarrassed moment. Oh, no wonder why Cole sparked your interest. Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> we both laughed for a little while. But yes, I do remember that day I came up to you and asked you if you wanted to be my friend. Best decision I ever made that day. I'm very grateful I was able to meet Jusuke that day in first grade. If I didn't, I wouldn't be where I am today, so thank you, Jusuke. Yeah, I'm grateful you asked me to be, asked me to be your friend that day as well. But look at us, we're both doing pretty good, huh? Yeah, we really are. I think we should get to be back to Betty Echo. He's probably wondering why the hell it's taken so long, Jusuke said. Yeah, let's go back, if I really need to piss. Okay, but hurry up, will you? Yeah, yeah. I'd finished in my business, I washed my hands. When I looked in the mirror, I saw the alligator again. I quickly spun around to see him, then he spoke. It's good to see you again, Ricardo. I'm glad you and your friend survived your 21st birthday fiasco, the alligator said. Okay, Ricardo, you're okay. You're just talking to a dead alligator. I have so many questions. How am I able to see him? How am I able to talk to him? And how the fuck does he know my name? I looked up to see him again. Although dead, he was quite calm. Is this how ghosts are supposed to be? Am I going crazy? Look, I know after we last met you are really scared and confused. But I swear I'm here to help and I'm not going to hurt you. Well, who are you and why the hell can I see you? I don't have all the answers, but I am really grateful you're still alive. So you're not going to answer any of the questions? Like I said before, I don't have answers for you, Ricardo. But I know over time you will get your answers. I looked up at the alligator who was smiling, knowing everything will be okay. If you're really here to help me, then what are you doing so far? The alligator took a deep breath. Making sure you're not another victim, that's for damn sure. I'm guessing he means a victim of Henry. Or oh, hell, any kind of lunatic I might bump into. i better get back to the others. Good luck, Ricardo. And just like that, he was gone. I'd better get back to my friends as well. Oh my god, did that just happen? I just talked to that dead alligator again. Some crazy shit right here. At least I know this is happening now, but why me? Why is it only me? Am I going to see him again? By the time I joined the others, I had a not-so-blank face. Just came Betty Arco just watched me, staring at me. Ricardo, is everything okay? Jusuke asked. I had to be strong for them, so with a deep breath... Yeah, everything is fine. Don't worry, I'm just still just a little tired, that's all. Jusuke could tell I was lying, but I knew I couldn't say anything in front of Ediaco, so we both played it cool. Well, if you're all right, I'm going to pay for our meal. I'll be back shortly. I sat at the table waiting for Jusuke to come back. Uh, so, uh, Ricardo, um, uh, you and Jusuke like horror movies? 
Yes, finally something we can talk about. Oh my god, are you kidding? We love horror movies. First time me and Juice K saw it, I saw a horror movies when we were both 11. What? What? No way. That's how old I was when I saw my first horror movie as well. Shut up. No way, that's so cool. Uh, what was your first horror movie? I quickly pulled out my sketch pad and showed him the page with a pumpkin of the knife coming out. Nice 1978. 70s classic. Nice pick. Well, that's for me. He quickly pulled out his phone and looked at what appeared to be teenagers in front of her face looking surprised. Now this is a 1996 classic right here. Ever seen it? No, I don't think so. Me and Drew's Cave mostly watch a load of 70s and 80s horror. We'll certainly try and watch 90s horror now. Thanks, Bediaco. Yeah, no problem, Ricardo. If you need more 90s movies, let me know. Oh, you definitely know I will. Hey, Ricardo, I uh, want to say uh, thanks, Bediaco stated, for the food and stuff. No problem, Bediaco. <laughs> Welcome back home. I said it with a smile on my face. We mostly just talked about horror movies and anything else until Jusuke came back. When the dragon did come back, he had what looked like a blushed face. Okay, guys, I just paid, so let's get going, Jusuke said. We all got our coats on and we're about to leave when Mohammed stopped us. Are you boys leaving already? Mohammed asked with a sad tone. Yeah, unfortunately you all need to get home, Mohammed. But thanks so much for the treats and drinks. They were really delicious, Jusuke said. Yeah, before you go, please have these. He brought out a plate of what appeared to be Valentine's Day cookies. I know Valentine's Day was a couple of weeks ago, but I take the holidays very seriously. Since it's the second to last day of February, I think you boys should have these. Go on, it's on the house. Oh, oh thank you, Mohammed, Jusuke said. Did Jusuke just get flustered? Oh, Jusuke, maybe it's about time I get some payback. Well, um, uh, see you again whenever, Mohammed, Jusuke said before we all left. We got into the limousine and drove off. We asked where Bediaco lives. After putting in his address, it took about maybe 40 to 50 minutes to get there. It was a complicated apartment building. It didn't look like it was in good condition. But it's better than nothing, I thought to myself. Um, hey guys, uh, thanks again for everything. I really appreciate it. Uh, can I get your phone numbers, please? Of course, dude, I said. Absolutely. After exchanging numbers, we rode off. I told Matthew my address and just waited. So, Jusuke, I need to tell you something very important. But before I do that, I saw you looking flustered back at the establishment. Want to explain what that was about? Jusuke gave, gave me a confused look. What are you talking about, Ricardo? Ah, oh, come on, don't play dumb. You know you're getting flustered when Mohammed has given us those cookies. You look like he's talking to you. Specifically you. I know Drusuke very well. No use lying now. Okay, okay, so when I was paying for the meal, Mohammed asked me how I was doing. Okay, good Mohammed, hope this is enough. Mohammed looked down to see a hundred dollar bill. Also, keep the change. Are you sure I can't split it up? Oh no, please, I insist. Well, if you say so, Drusuke. Mohammed took the bill and put it in the cash register. So, what do you think of the food? Did you and your friends enjoy it? Mohammed asked. Oh, I think it was delicious. Complaints to the chef. Mohammed took a second. Oh, um, yeah. Very welcome, Jusuke. I'm happy you enjoyed my food. I gave him a surprised look. Wait, you're the one who made the cookies, cake and pie? Yep. Everything you see on the menu was made by me or my co-workers. Oh, thank you so much for the food. Don't have to come back here again. You know, I was surprised when I saw you guys again. I didn't think I'd see you both again since the hospital. How are you both holding up? And who's that new fellow with you? We're both holding up okay. However, Ricardo got the worst of it. Thankfully, that bunny's in prison. I hope we never see his fucking ass again. Well, the hyena? He's a new student that just showed up. His name's Bediaco. He isn't too bad. Ricardo seemed to like him. So do I. I said, smiling. What happened to that bear you guys saw at the bar as well? Oh, Ricardo's crush. I'm not sure. He doesn't talk about him a lot. He says since that birthday he doesn't want to make things weird or just trying to take it slow or who knows. I think they make a cute couple, but in a psychopath, whatever that rabbit was trying to do to him. I agree with you there. That bear was cute and nice beard too. The only thing happened when I left Rick to get Ricardo a doctor. Oh yeah, he did take a while to get a doctor. Ah, uh, my bad. It's okay. After you left, we all made sure Ricardo's alright. 
A chief priest came in to ask me in regard to some questions about that night. He's uh, St. Bernard, and his name is Owen. Maybe from his 40s? Oh, I know who you're talking about. I've seen him around town for, before. He's a great chief of police. Get him around, there's nothing he can't do. You both just looked at you and Betty Arco. I should probably get them home. I need to get home myself. Ah, leaving already? I certainly enjoy the company you three bring. Especially you. I know all of you are cute, but you're my favourite. But maybe I'll see you again? Yeah, maybe. And that's what happened. After hearing what happened between the two of them, it was nice that someone was interested in Jusuke. Oh, Mohammed's little thing for you. How oh, sweet. I said with a cheeky grin, the same way he saw me in Cole for the first time. What? No, it's not like that. You're overreacting. Oh, no. No, you don't. You've been talking about me and Cole and messing with me for almost two weeks now. So I think it's a time for a little payback, don't you think? I said, teasing all over the place. After 50 minutes of teasing and messing with each other, I decided to finally tell him about what I saw again. Hey, Yusuke, there is something I need to tell you. There is something I need to say too, but you can go first if you want. I took a nice deep breath and said, I saw that alligator again in the bathroom, back of the bakery. Yusuke took a second to react. Are you really sure you saw him again? I mean, it could be, I don't know, a hallucination, right, or something else? No, it wasn't a hallucination or anything else. This was real, I know it. It can't be a coincidence as well. He showed up right as I was washing my hands. I'm very positive I'll see him again. I just have this funny feeling that I will see him again. We both just sat there not saying anything for a while. Okay, Ricardo, while we're still in class, I debate on whether or not we should tell Owen, but I know you don't want to say anything. I feel like we should try and come up with a version that sound crazy, right? Or, I don't know, it's all new and complicated. I looked up to see his head down. I touched his shoulder, knowing everything is going to be okay. Whatever happens, we'll get through this together. We will figure out something. I just know we've made it this far grow up, and we're not giving up now. After our little conversations, we decided to take our minds off it and talk about something else until we got home. We mostly talked about Cole and Mohammed on what it would be like if I worked with them. Honestly, I'm not sure if I can handle the mine. And what Jusuke would be like for you to work at the bakery with Mohammed. I also told Jusuke about the 1996 horror movie Bediako told me about. Now we should try 90s horror movies. Huh. Who would have thought? Me 70s, Jusuke 80s, Bediako 90s. All together. Bitchin'. Twenty minutes later I arrived at my house. We've arrived, Ricardo. It was nice seeing you again. Hope to see you again soon, said Matthew. I sure can be okay with him. I can. I mean, I can ask my parents if you can spend the night at my place. No, it's okay even though we don't see eye to eye. He's still my dad and I try my best to take care of him. You know it wasn't the best of taking care of me. Later, Jusuke. As soon as I stepped out of the limousine, it quickly sped off. Get home so you're safe, Jusuke. I said as I saw the limousine leave out of my view. I walked to the front of the steps and looked up. Ever since I was a baby, this is where I grew up. It's not a big house or anything, but it's home. I grabbed my key and opened the front door. While listening closely to hear if my father was home, I could hear the TV on, so he must be home. After closing the front door and locking it behind me, I looked into the living room to see my father sitting on his rocking chair with a beer in hand. I quietly walked over to him slowly, picked up the remote and turned off the TV, then took the beer from his hands from the kitchen. Thankfully, my room is on the top floor and my dad sleeps downstairs. Walked over the staircase and walked up the stairs. When I got to my room, I opened it, turned on the light and locked my door. Thankfully, when I was little, I accidentally broke my door frame. I was able to get a new door with a lock on it. Growing up, I didn't have a lot. This small yet comfortable room was fine. I had a bed, clothing drawer. There was also a closet, which was nice, and some posters. Also, one Christmas in 2008, I got a very amazing gaming console, which I still have to this day. I used to have an old TV. On my 14th birthday, Juicy Kid's family was able to buy me a flat screen TV. He also bought me that new gaming console that came out in 2017, along with a Blu ray player. I then sat on my bed looking at the clock that read 5 30 pm. I think I will take a little nap. I put my phone on my nightstand. It's a really old phone from 2008, a flip phone. Thankfully, it still works after all this time. And I quickly fell asleep. I woke up later to the sound of my phone. 
I turned to the nightstand and looked at the clock that read 7pm. I turned on the light and looked to see who it was. It read, Cole. Oh my God, Cole. I haven't talked to him in quite a while. OK, don't panic. Let's see what he says. Hey, Ricardo, it's Cole. Just want to see how you're doing since your birthday. Also want to see if you'd still like to work at the mine. Damn, it has been a while. Well, I'm very worried about him. OK, let's see. Hey, Cole, I'm sorry if I worried you. But I am doing all right, thanks for asking. As for the mines, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it since my birthday. After a couple of minutes, Cole responded back. Oh, I'm really sorry about what happened. How's your neck doing? Yeah, my neck is doing all right, but it hurts to turn it around sometimes. Oh, I feel you. How's your day, Ricardo? Give him a brief rundown of how my day went, I recounted how I made a new friend at college. I also discussed the cafe me and my friends went to and how delicious the food was. My, my, you had a busy day, Cole replied. I'm glad you had fun. Thanks. How was your day? Oh, it was all right. I had to wake up early for work. It takes 40 minutes for me to get to the mines. Thankfully, there weren't any accidents or dead bodies discovered today. I felt frozen, tempted to process what he just told me. A few minutes passed as a result and Cole began to type again. Sorry, I was just kidding. Hope my joke didn't scare into not getting a job here. It's fine, no worries. Well, I know the mines ain't something you're used to, but it's fun, especially with co-workers. Plus, tremendous pay. I don't know, Cole. It all depends on my school schedule as well. But yeah, I'll think about it some more, I promise. Just not the time to. Thanks, Ricardo. Well, I better make something, because this bear is hungry. Talk to you again when I can. Have a good night, Ricardo. You too, Cole. Good night. My clock read 7.15pm. Well, since it's not too late in the night, I'd better make some dinner for Dad and I. And that was Chapter 2 of Starlight Falls. Um, probably Chapter 3 will be long in a month or two. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to check with the writers on that. But uh, that's our short story for today. And tomorrow we will be dropping into Socially Awkward. I know Monchi brought it out at the end of last week, but I uh, haven't had the time to get to it. But we'll definitely be uh, catching up with things. And if you have played it already, we'll be taking the non option in the shower. You'll know what I mean by that. The rest you can find out. But I am not going to deal with that much censoring. <laughs> but that will be tomorrow. And then, of course, on the weekend, we are returning to After Class. And we'll be dipping back into Parker's history a bit. That's something to look forward to. But before I wrap up here, as always, thanks to all my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are so appreciated. And my top don my top patrons Ah, Burnt Toast, Kartek, Gobas Visa, Legacy Bucciarati, Lark Huskerton, Mastian, Brian Hall, Tiger Cup, Ella Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Cindy Dragowolf, Marcus, Evan King, Exac, Aaron Fox, Mohammed Al Zamel, Andy Peng, Samuto, Omar, Big Booty Judy, Nova Starburn, and Vulpers Need Coffee. Special thanks to all of them. And uh, the Patreon link is in the description if you feel like uh, dropping by. Or you can also donate on Kofi or just watch. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, as long as I know you're enjoying these, it's all good. So until tomorrow, when I have to voice Jace again. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.